Mod Quilts by Anita Good Designs includes 20 designs inspired by prints from the 50s and 60s. Here is one of those designs. Begin by hooping stabilizer in your hoop. The stabilizer should be strong enough to support the embroidery while being soft and flexible enough to be included within your quilt. My preference is Cutaway Poly Mesh by OESD. To conserve on stabilizer, I do not cut the stabilizer from the roll, thus preventing the waste that occurs with each hooping. My Machine's Embroidery Edit function includes a Sewing Repeat Patterns button. Using that function, I created a second repeat of the design and used the Spacing key option to separate the design as far apart as possible while still fitting within the sewing area of my hoop. This left half an inch between the designs which does require some extra care, but also conserves stabilizer. When designing applique blocks, the digitizer must indicate separate colors of thread so the machine will stop between steps. You should not follow the colors as they are just for those stops. Stitch the first step of the design with the color that will be visible on the poly mesh. It is the squaring stitch and dictates the size of your block. Everything inside the square is shown in the quilt and everything outside of the square will be your seam allowance. Upon completion of your squaring stitch, change the thread color to a color that matches the background color of your block. Be sure you cut the thread before it enters the thread guise and pull the piece forward out through the needle. That will protect the tension discs and electronic sensors from being damaged by any lint and fraying that may have occurred with the friction placed upon it on the high speed embroidery process. The second thread stop is for placement of the batting. The batting needs to be slightly smaller than the quilt block so as to not add bulk to the seams. To hold the batting in place, spray it with some 505 repositionable adhesive. In this design, the third thread stop was an applique placement line followed by an applique stitch line for the background fabric. I chose to use a single square of background fabric instead. Thus, I used the thread minus button to return to the first placement stitch to attach a square with excess for seam allowances of the background fabric. I used two pieces and placed the fabric with 505 repositionable spray just out of the stitching area between the two blocks. You could hold the fabric in place with blue painter's tape or strips of sticky water-soluble stabilizer such as Aqua Mesh Plus. It is now time to place the amber red applique. Because I did the background fabric differently than the digitizer intended, I must use the thread plus button to advance to the placement stitch. Change the thread color to match your fabric, again clipping the former thread above the path and pulling the leftover thread from the needle area. Stitch out the placement line taking special care not to catch the seam allowance of either pattern when the machine jumps to the second block. Again, using 505 repositionable spray adhesive, place pieces of fabric large enough to cover the placement line in place. Continue with the same matching thread color and stitch the fabric in place. Because the corners of this applique are in the seam allowance, do not trim in that area, but do trim all of the interior pieces very close to the stitching line. As the machine is already threaded with the amber red thread, I again use the thread plus button to advance to the satin stitch for the amber applique. Now it is time for the pumpkin fabric. 
use the thread minus button to go backwards to the placement stitch for the pumpkin fabric. Change the thread color to match your fabric, again clipping the former thread above the path and pulling the leftover thread from the needle area. Stitch out the placement line. Cut a square of pumpkin fabric large enough to cover all placement lines. Cut a slit in the center of the square large enough to insert your scissors, but not so large that the presser foot will catch it as it moves across the surface. For visual purposes, I made these larger than they should be. Place the fabric over the placement lines, and again hold it in place with 505 repositionable spray, blue painter's tape, or water-soluble sticky stabilizer. Stitch the applique fabric in place. Carefully trim the pumpkin fabric as close as possible to the stitching line. Advance with the thread plus button past the amber satin stitch to the pumpkin satin stitch and stitch the final satin stitch outline. Remove the design from the hoop, cutting the stabilizer from them along the stitching lines. Sew the piece of stabilizer you cut from the bottom end to the new end of your roll of stabilizer for the next hooping. Carefully trim the blocks, leaving one half inch seam allowance around all the blocks squaring stitch. Sew your blocks together along the squaring stitches, taking care to match all appliques.